Hello, welcome to Morgan's with Neuromas. And as usual, I hope I am live. It's always a bit of a um, gamble there, but it looks so. <laughs> looks like I am live. So let's get going here with Keyforge Worlds Collide, the new set for Keyforge. So excited for this one, and yeah, there's so much cool stuff going on now. Yesterday uh, they. Uh, released it sort of, or they made it made it uh, available to play on the Crucible Online, the online place where you can uh, play Keyforge, which I can recommend if you haven't checked that out. It's really fun. You can get the prior decks and you know play from your home whenever you want. You don't have to find the friends and the time and everything to uh, play with your friends. And also, as usual, tell me in the live chat. You know, say hi. But you know, also tell me if there's any issues with the stream, if there's any issues with the sound or the the picture or whatever just let me know and if you have any questions about keyforge or the channel or whatever just you know you know tell me in the live chat but now let's get going get this uh, display box thank you so much to game maniacs you can check them out game maniacs.se and yeah i am excited to start looking through these hay scrub <laughs> so basically um it's a guy called scrub in the chat that's why i said it uh, <laughs> Basically, uh, I am looking for saurians. I'm looking for the dinosaurs and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go through these one by one Until we find some saurians and there's some saurians right away. Look at that. That's amazing. Cool I was planning to just go through them until we found one and then uh, Start opening it, but yeah, wow. I look at that orca. That looks really cool. <laughs> that looks really amazing So shadows untamed and saurians that sounds promising. It's interesting. And let's see if I can get this open. It seems like they have removed a little... Uh, there used to be a little thingy on the side so it was easier to open the decks. You know, to get the uh, little red banner thingy on the side. But, ah! I'll have to pull out the, the uh, heavy artillery here. There we go. So I can open this up. <laughs> That's your name though. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Wow, more... Okay. So let's get going, put this down here, and let's look through this. And I am going to try to do this in a good angle. I haven't gotten the best angle earlier on, but here we go. So we have Inca the Spider, uh, old classic one. So one power, poison, and play reap, stun a creature. That's a good one. I like it. It's, it's I mean, so weak, but it's nice to just stun someone. Eldest Bear, 5 power assault 3. While Eldest Bear is in the center of your battle line, it gains before fight, gain 2. What? <laughs> That's crazy. So you can get to Amber by just fighting with this guy, and he has assault 3 as well. But he has to be in the center of your battle line. That's a new thing going on there. And that could be a little bit tricky. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Uh, that can be a bit tricky to pull off, of course, because you know your opponent might kill and, and so on. Then we have Mimicry, one of my favorite cards in the whole game. Uh, when you play this card, treat it as a copy of an action card in your opponent's discard pile. Awesome. And Gibook, 5 power, destroy. Discard the top card of your deck. If it is a creature, after Gibook leaves play, put that creature into play in Gibook's position in the battle line. That's good as well. Uh, that's really cool. And Fangtooth Cavern, free amber. The location artifact at the end of your turn destroy the least powerful creature. Ooh, that's kind of tricky though because it doesn't say enemy creature, so it could be your creature. The least powerful creature gets destroyed every turn. I'm suspecting prey play deal two damage to up to three undamaged creatures. That's cool. Tantalin, uh, old one, sort of. And it has 9 power, only deals 2 damage when fighting, when you fight, after it fights, discard a random card from your opponent's archives. That could be good in some situations, and key chart is cool. Do you like it? Uh, key cheat, play, lose an amber, if you do, you may forge key at current cost. Always nice to have. I hope we can gather some amber in Untamed then, see about that. Imprinted Mermook, 3 power, elusive, your keys cost minus 1. Ooh, that helps out with the key charge, <laughs> that's good. Really like that. Harmonia, two power elusive. After you play a creature, if there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, gain an amber. It's a way to get amber, but it's a little bit tricky, I, say, I would say. Yeah, I do like the artwork as well on these cards. Uh, so good. I mean, 
This could work in some situations, like catching up, but it's kind of hard to pull off, I think, at two of those. Bramble Lynx, three power, beast, skirmish. If you have used a creature to reap this turn, Bramble Lynx enters play ready. This one is pretty cool. And that's not that hard to pull off. It's basically, if you have anything out here, you can reap with it. He comes in ready, you can reap with him. That's at least two Amber. And then you might have the Murmuk out. Yeah, you might be able to pull off a key charge in this Untamed. I'm not really sure. So, it seems like the Saurians are the last one. And keep the best for last, right? Subtle Mall, your opponent discards a random card from the hand. Like this, uh, having this out. Yangtze Gang, Firepower, Action, Steel Mall. Always good. S Simon, one power skirmish. Fight, put the creature Simon fights on top of its owner's deck. That's really good. Getting rid of a creature from the battle line. I do like that. And he has skirmish. He only has one power, but I mean, he, you can just take care of someone, right? And it doesn't, you know, he doesn't, it's not like poison that you have to do a damage. So even if your opponent has armor, it still happens, the effect. Pestering blow, or even if they're elusive as well. Pestering blow, one free amber, play, deal one damage to a creature and enrage it. And this is kind of cool. Enrage, for those of you that don't know, uh, it means that the creature has to do a fight on their next uh, activation. So you want to put enrage on some of your opponent creatures that are, have a good action, or they might, you know, you don't you don't want them to use the action of reap. You want them to just fight. Basically, you can force them for fight. And mug free amber play. Move an amber from a creature to your pool. Deal two damage to that creature. This is good as well. Just taking an amber out there. Move it to your pool. J Vinda two power elusive reap. Deal a damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, steal an amber. That's that's good as well. Good against bad penny, right? Hugger Mugger, three power elusive, play, capture an amber. Then if your opponent has more forged keys, then you steal one amber. So yeah, it's pretty good. You know, coming out, capturing, and it has elusive. Hawk, free amber, play, destroy an artifact if you do gain an amber. I love this card. This is basically a two, two amber card. Because you will play this when you can destroy an artifact, right? And destroying artifacts are so good to have the uh, option to do. And two of those, love it. Two hawks. Oh, three hawks, wow. This is this is a cool deck. This is gonna be really tough to meet if you your deck is based on a bunch of cool artifacts. Breaker Hill is good as well. One power elusive, and each of his neighbors gain action steal one. So you turn your neighbors into stealers. Really good card. Really nice if you can pull this off in a good place. I just wish he had uh, deploy, but maybe he would be too good. And I don't know. Uh, and a bad penny. Hate bad penny. Why is he in here? Okay, <laughs> that's it. Now we're going to the Saurians. I'm excited for this. My first Saurian opening here. And Favor of Rex. Free Amber. Play it. Trigger the play effect of a creature as if you had just played it. That is amazing. That's really good. If we have some good play effect. I can't even recall now if you had any good play effects. I'll look through that uh, later. But yeah, really good. And the... Califigian Ideal, an upgrade, play Exalt this creature. Exalt means that you put an Amber on it, uh, which is, you know, bad basically for you because then your opponent can, you know, kill the kill that creature and get that Amber. So, but this creature gains. You may spend Amber on this creature as if it were in your pool. So it's actually good on this creature. You put it on, you Exalt it, you get an Amber, and then you can spend that. That could also help out, like, for the key charge on your next turn. And Stomp, haven't seen this before. Free Amber, play, deal five damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, exalt a friendly creature. Ooh, so then we can exalt whoever has this on it. So that we get another Amber that we can use. That's that's really cool. Uh, tribute, Free Amber, play, the most powerful enemy creature captures two. You may exalt that creature to repeat the preceding effect. Ooh. Wow, this is, incre this is insane. Okay, so we can definitely pull off a key charge. Okay, I'm just gonna have to look at this. Uh, let's say we have Tantalin out, big strong creature, right? Then we play a Saurian turn. We put uh, we put this uh, idol on him. So now he gets exalted. So he so he gets one amber on him. Then we can use that amber to to you know for the key, like if it was in our pool. And then if we have Tribute on here as well in hand, then we can play that, get an Amber. The most powerful friendly creature, will, which will be Tantalin, captures two from the opponent. And then we Exalt him, which means he's up to three Amber, plus the one here, so he's four Amber. And then we do this again, which is up to six Amber on him. And then if he survives and we can play Untamed next turn, we can do Key Charge. Wow, that is really cool. Really cool combo here. 
And we have two of those. Wow, that's insane. So we could basically capture eight amber, <laughs> plus getting two exalts. We could get 10 amber on, on him. But of course, it's dangerous. If they can get rid of Tantalin, they get those 10 amber. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I like that. Oh, the, a third one. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, I don't know. I mean, this is so much amber on our... Um, it's so much capture. It's amber control. I like it. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of dangerous if they can kill that guy, you know. Anyway, Questor Yorta, three power elusive. Reap, you may exalt him, and if you do, gain an amber. Yeah, so you get two amber from reaping with him, but then you have to put one here, which means your opponent can get that later on. And the, this artwork is cool as well, these dinos in Rome. It's kind of a weird combo, but anyway. And this card also, wow, if this one is out, then you can just relax. Because Prefectus Ludo, five power, each other friendly creature gains destroyed. Move each amber on this creature to the common supply. So we can use these three to put a bunch, capture a bunch of amber, exalt our creatures, put a bunch of amber on them, have lots of amber on our creatures. And as long as he's out, it's no problem. Because if they board wipe or whatever, then all that amber just goes wasted. So <laughs> two of those as well, which increases the chance of being able to do this effect and protect that amber. Or like not protect it, but stop it from getting to the opponent. Wow, this is a really cool uh, combo one more thing here. Imperial Scutium, upgrade, free amber, this creature gets two armor and gains destroyed. Move each amber on this creature to the common supply. Yeah, so that's the same thing as the loot. Okay, we're gonna have to wait, let's go through this. Um, <laughs> and Chant of Hubris, free amber, move an amber from a creature to another creature. And that's the two last, okay. So basically, what do we wanna do in this deck? Get Tantalin out, right? He's not that big of a target either. I mean, he's not that dangerous, so people usually don't target him too much. Then we play Saurians after that. I mean, we can't have all the cards in hand, obviously, but let's say we can get like one or two Tributes out. That's gonna put a bunch of Amber on him. And if we can also get this uh, Imperial Scutum out here on him, then that means he gets two armor, and if our opponent kills him, then all the amber on that we capture with these, that's wasted, that's gone. <laughs> and if we can also get this, somehow, get this upgrade on, on him, then just as I said, then we can spend all that amber to make a key with key charge or just normally, wow, this could be so cool. I mean, this combo, this whole thing basically that the Saurians are doing here would be kind of useless if we didn't have a big creature. We need one big creature. And the thing is we only have like, yeah, I think he's our only real big creature uh, with nine. Then it was fives. So it sort of builds on the fact that we can have Tantalin. I mean, if Tantalin comes late in the game, then we're going to have to do it with a five power creature. It's not going to be that great, but still a really cool combo here. I like it. Uh, really cool stuff going on here. I think there's this, uh, this deck is something I'm, I'm going to have to play just, you know, on, on uh, the Crucible Online just, you know, uh, after the stream because I have to try it out. That is so cool. I'm just gonna check how much amber we have in here as well. Uh, now these new cards can be a bit tricky for me to understand what is amber and what is not basically, but we'll see if we can figure it out. So uh, we'll start with the um, amber, the printed amber, which was you know, a fair bit. And we have, oh, love that we have mimicry in here as well. So I mean, we have two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, 12, 14 printed amber, and then basically, well, this is kind of tricky ways, but there are ways for, like these will give us an extra amber because we'll destroy an artifact. Um, this will move an amber from a creature to our pool. That's like getting another amber, sort of. And yeah, there's, um, I thought about, I think there was some amber in here as well, all right, with the. I mean, this guy reaps for two if he can stay alive. He's elusive, though. Um, yeah, I think there was some more. Let's see here. Stealing one, of course. And this is your key. The keys cost plus minus one. Awesome. And mimicry can be used in interesting ways. And this guy, if, he, if you can pull it off that he's in the middle, you get two ammo when you fight with him. Just crazy. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this deck. I am excited to try this one out for sure.
Wow, cool stuff. Okay, let's get to the next one. And let's zoom out a little bit. And let's see what we have here. So, once again, a bit tricky to open these. But you know what? I was looking for Saurians. We have another Saurian deck and Star Alliance in the same, the two new houses in the same deck. That's my first as well, of course, for that. So cool. I'm happy for this. I mean, I had no idea of knowing if there was any Saurian decks in this. And, you know, I named the stream to look for Saurians. So, <laughs> already mission completed, right? Found two Saurian decks. So, let's see what we have in here. Let me just get this. Uh, out of there and uh, let's put that there and let's start and we start off with star alliance see if we can zoom in a little bit and we have uh, frames blaster i haven't seen this before i've seen another one of those blasters but not frames so this is free amber upgrade this creature gains fight reap you may deal two damage to a creature or attach frames blaster to first officer frame after you attach frames blaster to first officer frame move each amber from first officer frame to your pole so I guess this um, Frayne guy or girl can uh, capture a lot of amber. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, oh, <laughs> if you haven't played Keyforge, you know, you can check out my playthrough videos and so on. Okay, so United Action. It's an alpha card. Play for remainder of the turn. You may play a card from any house for which you have a card in play. You cannot use card this turn. This is really good. So you have a big board out there with, you know, artifacts and creatures. You play this one as an alpha card, the first thing you do. Then you can't use cards this turn, but you can play card from any house. So you can pretty much empty out your hand, I guess. Really cool. Universal Translator, free amber upgrade. This creature gains fight reap. Use a friendly non-star alliance creature. That is really good as well. Nice. Transporter Platform, it's an artifact, free amber. Uh, return a friendly creature and each upgrade attached to it to your hand. Ooh, so you can get the upgrades back. Let's say your creature is really damaged, just or for some reason you want to put the upgrades on someone else. Then, yeah, that's a really cool effect. Two of those as well, which feels a bit overkill. How often do you want to return? But then again, you get to return a friendly creature, right? Even if it doesn't have any uh, upgrades. So still good if we have some play effect, we can return those to our hand. And most of these guys have play effects. They have play, fight, reap, most of these uh, uh, Star Alliance creatures. So Navigator Ali, three power, play, fight, reap. Look at the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. It could be good, in some cases. Two of those as well. Helm, Helmsman Spears, Helmsman, not Helmsman, Helmsman. Two power, fight, reap, discard any number of cards from your hand. Draw a card for each card discarded this way. This is awesome as well. You can get rid of a bunch of cards, set something up here and get draw a new card. And another upgrade, force field, free amber, this creature gains reap, war this creature. So many cool upgrades in this uh, house. Red alert, play if there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, deal damage to each enemy creature equal to the difference. This is nice as well. Really good if you're uh, behind on the battle line. Two of those. First officer Frain. oh here's Frain. Four power, play, fight, reap. A friendly creature captures one. Okay. So you want to... You want to get some amber capture there. And then put the blaster on. Because when you attach it, move each amber from Officer Frame to your pool. Then you get that amber that she captured. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. And now we're into Saurians. <laughs> now the Saurians, I'm so happy to do this. Uh, free Amber, Regrettable Meteor, play, destroy each dinosaur creature and each creature with power 6 or higher. Oh. <laughs> Not again, it says in the flavor text. The Meteor is destroying all the dinosaurs. <laughs> That's so, such a cool artwork as well, with the reflection in the eye of a dinosaur, seeing all those Meteors coming. That is so cool. And this is of course good against Adosaurian decks. Uh, so when you don't have your dinosaurs out, then you can get rid of your opponent's dinosaurs. Library of Polyasaurus. Um, location, artifact, action. Move one amber from a friendly creature to your pool. That's really good, especially when you have captures, which I do think we will have in here. They have a lot of capture. Exile. Oh, I haven't seen this before. Free amber. Play. Give control of a friendly creature to your opponent. So you can give a creature to your opponent. I'm thinking, why would you want to do that? But I guess there's some creatures that... 
Mm, now we don't have Brobnor in here, but if we had one of those Brobnor giants that says the neighbors can't reap, it would be kind of fun to give that to your opponent. Uh, I don't know. There's probably other co other creatures we want to give away then. Oh, Draco! Look at this. It's a guy called Draco. Draco Preco. Four power reap. You may exalt Draco Preco. If you do, choose the house and reach each creature of that house. Oh, so you can really mess up your opponent's battle line. If they have a bunch of good reapers out or action cards, then you can just enrage them all and they have to fight with them. That's, that's really fun. But you have to exalt this guy though, so you have to put an amber on him. Tricaria Legionary, 5 power, 1 armor, taunt, play ward a friendly creature. This is really cool. I like it. Uh, Tricaria Legionary, 5 power, oh it's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, awesome, really good. Having two of those, two taunts with armor. And Tero Centurion, 6 power, 1 armor, play fight, capture, and amber. These are the guys I talked about when I talked about this, probably some captures in here. I've seen these before. And they have a lot of capture, and then you can pull that amber into your pool from that card. AJ Botero. Um. <laughs> Draco is so popular, he's in the game. Uh, what are you saying? Give, give him a, a crit, give him a, yeah, a crit to load with capture amber. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's what you want with this uh, guy here. And uh, this guy can capture, and only one of those, the Golden Spiral. Artifact, action, exalt a friendly creature, ready and use that creature. This is really cool. You can use some creature out of house. You can use some other creature uh, on a Saurian turn. You have to exalt it though. So that's the thing. Legatus Raptor, four power, one armor, fight. You may exalt Legatus Raptor. If you do, ready and use another friendly creature. This is good as well. Always good to be able to use creatures out of house, basically. Hey, you are. And two of those. Really cool. I mean, you have to exalt them. That's like the downside, but it, otherwise than that, they're like you have to, and they have to fight, of course. But uh, yeah, really could you be able to ready and use another friendly creature? Uh, that's such such a good effect. Imperial Scutum again, free amber, and you get two armor and gains destroyed. Move the amber from here to the common supply. So this is good to put on someone that has captured a bunch, of course. Two of those as well, like it. A lot of upgrades in this deck, a lot of them. Okay. So really nice, uh, the two new houses. I like all those cards in there basically. Uh, I haven't played them of course yet, but they, they look awesome. So this, and we have a older style card, but this is a good one. With the free amber, Ortonus binding, deal two damage to a friendly creature. So you're do, doing damage to your own creatures, which could actually work because if they have a bunch of amber on them, you might want to kill them if they have this upgrade on them because then the amber will go to the common supply. So you might want to kill your own creatures actually with this. And you have two of these, you always get like more than one. And then we have Ortondo the Chained. And he has seven power. When he reaps, we return each copy of these from our discard pile to our hand. And for each more return, we deal two damage to a creature with two damage splash. So that's a good a direct damage effect there as well. Then Orb of Invidious. Free Amber Artifact after a creature reaps, stun it. Could be good in some situations. I don't remember, I don't... I mean, we have some reap effects here, I don't know. Uh, oh, key to this. I love this. This is an oldie. Uh, artifact, sacrifice key to this, destroy each creature. I love having a board wipe. Especially if we play against one of these Saurians that are just capturing and exalting a lot. Then it's nice to just clear them off and take all that amber, right? Hectatomb. Free amber, play, destroy each this creature. Each play against an amber for each creature that they control. That was destroyed this way. Oh, that was hard to say. So, we hopefully have a bunch of this creatures that we can destroy this way then. Um, okay, you want to saying that he played a lot today. The new set feels really strong and he has lost a lot. Uh, and yeah, that's the same for me. I've lost a lot. Uh, I played a bunch on uh, online and I just keep losing because they have so cool effects and I can't really handle them all. I don't, I haven't <laughs> figured out how to counter, counter all that yet. But this could be good. And um, Scullion, seven power, sacrifice a friendly creature. Once again, could be good to get rid of a friendly creature if they have this on them and some bunch of amber. So we can you know, get rid of that amber. Seven power, two armor. We haven't seen a new, there's no new discards in here. All these discards are from the first two sets. Let's see if we have any new discards. Oh, there's a new one. Two power, five, three armor, Harbringer of Doom. Destroy, destroy each creature. This is also a board wipey guy. Can have them out there and when it's a good time, you can destroy him. You can destroy him with Scallion basically. That's not really good because then you destroy Scallion as well. I don't know. 
And then we have another new one. Free Amber, Festering Touch. Play, you choose up to two creatures, deal one damage to each chosen creature. If that creature was already damaged, deal three damage instead. There's also a bit of a board wipey or, you know, selective removal. You can get rid of some nasty enemy creatures. And Exhume is an old but lovely card. This is such a good card. Uh, if you've seen my top 25 card from Age of Ascension from the second set, you know that this one was really high up there. Really like that one. If you haven't seen it, you can go check out that video, of course, uh, after this. A really good free amber play. Choose a creature in your discard pile. You may play that creature as if it belonged to the active house and was in your hand. So good. There's so many uses for this. And two of those. Nice. Can we get a third? Come on. No, we got a new one. Graining touch. Play. Destroy a creature with no amber on it. That's good as well. A lot of creatures won't have any amber on it, so. But, wow. So we had like... This is kind of weird, this though, because we have three creatures in total. Uh, so, Hector Tomb won't be that good. Because, yeah. Uh, the, only, the good thing with Hector Tomb is we could destroy Harbinger of Doom. If, he, if he's out there, we can play Hector Tomb, destroy him, get an Amber, and then destroy each creature. So, that's like Hector Tomb becomes a board wipe in some sense. And overall, it wasn't that many creatures in this, uh, was it? There's some in here, of course. I like we had some taunt guys. We don't have that many taunt guys anymore, like we used to have in the first set and so on. Uh, it's like they move around, so some effects aren't really... That was, you know, some effects that were a lot in the previous sets, like the Age of Ascension had a lot of if you reap, you get stunned thingies. And those don't seem to be at all in the new set. So they're, they're of course, missing, mixing it up. But we have three, six, nine, ten. Wow, thirteen creatures. Are you kidding me? That is really low. That is extremely low. And I mean, this guy just sacrifices one. Wow. But that means we have a lot of other stuff, of course. We have a lot of action cards and so on. But still, thirteen creatures. That's usually not that great of a sign. And especially, I think there's a lot of, you know, battle going on these days well we have two creatures more actually because we have exhumes to exhumes so that's sort of like having two more creatures but i mean these days it's a lot about the board and controlling the board and all that with the new sets so having just 13 creatures that doesn't sound that good what do we have here three six nine ten uh 12 14 16 uh amber pips that's good though I think that's pretty high for the new set, to be honest. It's like it was like uh, the average for the for the first set, but I think it's high for this one. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to play this and see how that works. I mean, such so few creatures, uh, and of course, having few creatures also means that our upgrades won't be as good, right? We had a Quite a few upgrades here. And I mean, well, of course, we can upgrade the same guy more than once, but I almost feel like I wanted a few more creatures in here. I mean, we have some nice upgrades. I mean, warding when reaping, using a friendly non star alliance when reaping, uh, dealing two damage to a creature or attaching it to the guy, uh, two armor, and that destroyed effect. That, that's good stuff. Absolutely good stuff, but uh, yeah, a bit of a different deck. That's fun as well. I mean, I like having different styles of decks, so uh, it's not always the same thing when you play, right? Well, let's keep going. So far, two out of two decks have been Saurian decks. Let's find a third one, maybe. And we didn't. This is old classic houses, but that could be great anyway. Could be fun, some fun new cards. So let's go through this one as well. Uh, I am honestly in the mood to just, you know, do a long live stream uh, tonight, so why not? As long as people are enjoying it. It's fun. And I do like to do these, like, uh, when there comes a new set, uh, do a serious, you know, a long live stream and go through a lot of new stuff. So, Selwyn the Fence, 3 power, fight reap, move an amber from one of your cards to your pool. This would be good to have together with all those Saurians that exalt and have amber on them, right? Too much to protect, love it. Free Amber, play steal all but six of your opponent's Amber. This is a great card. 
Saddle Maul. Action your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Hidden Stash. Free Amber. Play Archive card. Only old cards so far. Rony Wrist Clocks. Two power plays. Steal an Amber. If your opponent has seven Amber or more, steal two instead. Love him. Festering Blow. Here's a new one. Free Amber. Deal a damage to a creature and a Rages. And this is new. Kaimor Eclipse. A guy had this against me in an online game today and that was really annoying. Uh, shuffle each flank creature into its owner's deck. So if you have two creatures out, he just kept playing. He had like three of these and he played it, had to shuffle them away. Yeah, two of those. Hugger Mugger is cool. It's a new one. Three power elusive. Play capture an amber. Then if your opponent has more forged key, then you steal an amber. So that's a good way to catch up, I guess. Hit and run is cool. Play to deal two damage to a creature, return a friendly creature to your hand. Really good for setting up a play effect. Well, not this guy because he captures, but... You know, in theory, in theory, we could pull something off like having Selwyn out, playing Hagemager, capturing one, reaping with her, move that Amber from Hagemager to our pool, then hit and run, get Hagemager back and capture another one. You know, it, it could be possible in theory. Breakthrough Hill, one power elusive, each of his neighbors gets action steal one. That's a really cool one, new one. Bad Penny, I don't know what you're, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Uh, Logos. Also an older card, Replicator, 2 power, Reap, trigger the Reap effect of another creature in play as if you control that creature. This could be cool, if your opponent has a good Reap effect, we can trigger that. Oh yeah, we love too much to protect, <laughs> we all do. Knowledge is power, play, choose one archive card, or for each archive card you have, gain an Amber. This whole deck seems to be a lot about the older style cards. Yargogol, Goggle, Goggle, I don't know. 2 power elusive, play, put a card from your hand face down under him. And when he's destroyed, if it's my turn, then I get to play the card. If it's the opponent's turn, that card will be archived. Which could be good for knowledge is power. Having getting that card archived, right? And this is something new, haven't seen before. Five power ca candle? I don't know. Candle unit. After an enemy creature reaps, draw a card. Ooh. What? After an enemy creature reaps, you draw a card. That's insane. Uh hey Ginsama. That's insane card, there's a passive effect. So if your opponent doesn't get rid of this and starts reaping, wow, that could be awesome. You draw a card uh, when it's not your turn. And it has the action capture one as well. Wow. I almost don't want to use this action because if I do, then this will be a bigger target for your opponent to kill because it will have amber on it. I'd rather just have it out there and, you know, don't mind me, just, you know, I'm just chilling out here make, giving you, giving myself cards. Anomaly exploiter, action, destroy your damage creature. That's a good one, always like that. And Wormhole Technician. This is the guy that handles the wild wormhole, I guess. Three power, reap. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a Logos card, play it. Otherwise, archive it. Once again, good for archiving. It's nice, like that. And here's the wor wor wormhole that he manages. Free Amber, play the top card of your deck. Quant, three power, reap. You may play one non Logos action card this turn. So it's, it's like a helper bot, sort of, but it's only, you know, you have to reap and it's only a action card. So. Um, oh yeah, with fence, what? With fence you can steal, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, exactly, with with fence, whatever she is, she's over here, you steal the, you steal amber, but it's like in two steps, you first have to capture it. Then we have hologramophone, free amber, action ward, a creature, I do like this one, it's good to just ward people, I mean, it's, it's not bad. Um, what are you saying, Butera? No, uh, you, so, uh, since during the opponent's turn you will be low on cards, you're not going to be low on cards, you draw at the last thing you do. So you have six cards and then your opponent's turn and then you get to draw more cards. So since you draw at the end of your turn, that, that's really good. And then Igor, I love Igor. Two power play, you look at the top three cards of your deck, add one to your hand and discard the others. Uh, that's an awesome one. And this is fun, the ED. Uh, yeah, here we go, Ginsama, you love the EDs. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> you die, ED, four times four. Three power play archive card. Your opponent keys cost plus one amber for each card in your archive. So, this is where you can set this up really fun. So, you, you want to have a bunch of cards in your archive because then you can play, play knowledge is power and then you gain an amber for each of those cards. And you can archive with, what was it? Uh, I don't know, didn't we have an archive card here? Oh, yeah, this one. If you reveal the top card, it's not a Logos card, then you can archive it. Your Google can also make your archive. 
And for every card you have in your archive, plus one amber for your opponents to forge keys. That's so good. Let's have another one of these. I love having two of these. Come on. No. Okay, but this is good as well. Babbling Bibliophile. And this is really fun uh, texture. I'm not going to read it all. This really, really huge uh, flavor text. And he has one power, reap, draw two cards. I mean, if he can somehow can survive, that's the thing. He only has one power. But reap, draw two cards, that is such a good effect. Really cool. Okay, so I do like that logos. That was interesting. Some interesting thing to pull off there. Now we are into this. And one of my favorite cards from this is Creeping Oblivion. Free Amber and you get to purge two cards from a discard pile. I love this because you can get rid of some nasty, nasty, nasty cards. Really like that one. Then a new one, Soul Fiddle, an artifact, action, and reach a creature. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, and reach someone that you don't want your opponent to be using for an action or for reaping. So, sounds kind of cool. Library of the Damned, artifact, archive a card. Again, archiving, like it, together with those logos, right? The Evil Eye. What is this? Free Amber, play Keith's cost plus three during your opponent's next turn. This is awesome as well. This is like a Lash of Broken Dreams in an action card, sort of. Ah, I do like it. And two of those, wow, can really slow your opponent down using these. And here's Rot Grob. Oh, good as well, because you play him, your opponent loses one. If you get to reap with him, you archive him. So you can have him in your archive for that archive effect again to make your opponent's keys cost more. And not finished with you, free amber play. You shuffle any number of creatures from your discard pile into your deck. That could be good. Lilithal, five power, fight, reap, capture, one amber. Sure. And two of those. And the Harboring of Doom again, so the sort of board wipey here. Dendrix, 5 power, fight, your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Always a good effect. And finally, Bustle, 3 power, skirmish, play fight, you may perch one of Bustle's neighbors if you do ready Bustle. I have a hard time seeing, how. when would you like to perch, oh, uh, you can perch Bad Penny, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm up for that any day, no problem. But except for her. You want to perch one of your creatures? Mm, maybe in the late game, but... I mean, it's just so he can be ready and you can fight with him with three power skirmish. It's not that great. I'm a bit hesitant to this card, but... Let's uh, let's pull out the um, creatures once again. Uh, was a bit more in this one, I think. 13 creatures in the last deck. That was just weird. That's just weird. But, I mean, that could be fun. I have some uh, old deck that also has like, I don't know, like 15 creatures and it's really, really good because it has a lot of other good stuff. So you never know. Uh, Ronnie was there, but Hagemaya, not that many creatures in this either. But I think it's like, yeah, you could thin your deck, I guess, but I'm not really sure who we want, want to uh, perch. Four, six, eight, 10, 14, 16, 18, 21 that's a good count that's a good count then again we don't have that much free amber i think i like too much protect is awesome but i would like to combo that with like an urchin so that you get down to six and then you steal you know one more i don't think these had any amber on them so the amber yeah the amber is really low in this deck which is four, six, eight, nine, and then of course get some extra from this. But the amber count is fairly low, and the creatures uh, count is kind of high there. But well, I mean, bad penny we could get rid of, right? I'm still thinking about that. I love this card. This is so cool. <laughs> Draw a card. Um. This is nice. Uh, Igor is nice. And this is awesome. Yeah, I don't know. This will be interesting to, to try this one out. <laughs> Just like with all the decks. Okay, well, I think we're ready to go into another one. And now I sort of, once again, hoping for some Saurians. I want to see more of them. Oh yeah, we can replicate fence with the yeah, that's cool. So this is a Star Alliance deck. Uh, really cool these uh, or the artwork here on the 
archons and the new set. Must have done some work on that. I think it's fun that they do that, but they will have the different. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's for fun. So this one, uh, let's put that out there and let's start going through it. So we start off with um, the new house star lines and an upgrade that I haven't seen, Encounter Suit. After an action is played, but before it resolves, ward this creature. Oh, so you can put this on someone that you want to keep uh, alive. And let's say your opponent does a board wipe or something, then you can ward the creature before uh, the action, the board wiping re is resolved. So you can protect it that way. That's interesting. Universal Translator, it's an upgrade. We had it earlier. Uh, free Amber, gain fight reap, user friendly non star alliance creature. That's good. And Stunner, upgrade Free Amber. This creature gains fight reap. You may stun a creature. I love that. That's awesome. Really like that. Uh, wow, <laughs> look at these upgrades. Just so many upgrades. Uh, quadra Quarter, Quadra Quarter. Your opponent's keys cost plus one for each house represented among friendly creatures to a maximum of three. That's cool as well. Um, basically, that means that you, if you have this out there, you can put something out there just to make the keys cost more, and that way you can stop a key from being forged. So four upgrades to start off. I like that. Then we have Nurse Soto. By the way, they changed it. They changed it back. I just realized that. You know, in the first set, it was like first came all the upgrades, then came all the creatures. Then in Age of Ascension, they changed it so it all, first came all the rares, uh, and then came, you know, the co uncommons and then the commons. I just realized that they changed it back, so now you get the upgrades first and then the creatures. I like that. Okay, uh, Nurse Soto, three power deploy, play fight reap, heal three damage from each of his neighbors. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. He comes in and he can heal. Sap, free amber, play, deal one damage to a creature for each house represented among creatures in play. So this becomes better basically if the opponent doesn't have any of these houses. If they have other houses, Sap becomes better. And then we have Sensor Chief Garcia. She didn't have her blaster now though. Because I have another deck where she has her blaster. Okay. A three power play fight reap. Keys cost plus two during your opponent's next turn. Love it. <laughs> this is so cool. So nice. And Psy Officer Quincan, elusive. After a play, you choose an active house which matches no cards in play. You steal an amber. This is fun. So if this is like, you know, if you get this out at the right time, you can steal a, you know amber with it. I like it. That's really cool. Uh, Red Alert, we talked about this earlier, uh, like sort of board wipey stuff there. Explorer, this is cool. This is a creature with three power skirmish, or it can be played as an upgrade, and this creature gains skirmish. So that's like a fifth upgrade here. <laughs> I like it. That's really cool. And Chief Engineer Walls, two power elusive. Play Fight Reap, you may return an upgrade or robot card from your discard pile to your hand. This could be really good in this deck because we have so many upgrades, right? So, um, you know, when, when they end up in the discard, then we can get them back with this. And to our hands, we can play them right away since we are in Star Alliance, right? And two of those. Oh, I like that. And now we go into Shadows with the new card, Into the Night. Play until the start of your next turn. Non-Shadows creatures cannot be used to fight. Ooh, that's nice. See, if our opponent doesn't have Shadows, I mean, they can't fight until the next... That's really good. Hidden Stash, Free Amber, or a Cord. Yangtze Gang, Firepower, Action, Steal One. Umbra, Two Power, Skirmish, Fight, Steal One. I love Umbra. I like that they, they, they kept Umbra around, even in the third set. And Ronnie Risk Clocks, two power, steal one. If your opponent has seven or more amber, you steal two. So uh, nice stealing going on here. And there's the Chimer Eclipse, shuffle each flank creature into its owner's deck. Here's J Vinda. These, this, these guys are a bit tricky, I think. Two power elusive, reap, deal one damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, steal an amber. It's such a conditional card. There's so much that has to happen to make this you know, work. And it's a, you know, only two power. Inky Gloom is cool though. Your opponent cannot use, use creatures to reap on their next turn. This is really good at the right time to stop your opponent from reaping a bunch. Hugger Mugger, three power to save, captures one, and then he steals one if your opponent has more keys than you, and I do like this card. And here's Hit and Run again, deal two damage to a creature, return a friendly creature to your hand. Really nice card, especially with play effects. 
And did we have any cool play? Oh yeah, 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 of course. Ronnie. <laughs> so we can hit and run someone, pull back Ronnie, play him again, steal again. Oh, I like that. So Ronnie is a guaranteed steal too there, if, of course, if we have the cards in hand in the right time. And here's Avinda. I think they always come together. It seems like four power reap deal a damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, your opponent discards a random card from their hand. This is pretty good. Four power is good. I mean, he might be able to stay alive a little more. And what is this? Look at this. We got a, what's it called? Uh, an anomaly. This is an anomaly card. Wow, look at that. That is so cool. The Red Baron. Wow. And I've seen this before. I've seen this before because Martin, my friend Martin, when we were at Essence Spiel, uh, we picked up our decks at the, in the morning there on the Thursday. Uh, Martin's first deck that he opened up was had the Red Baron in it. And uh, this is so cool because it's sort of... Um, it's sort of, it's, it's so special because it has four power one armor, right? Uh, cyborg pirate, but it's while your red key is forged, the red baron gains reap steal one. So that means you wanna, when you play this deck, you, you're gonna absolutely, because now you get to choose in which order you forge the keys. So you have, absolutely want to have your red key forged first and then get the red baron out there. Really cool. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, I know that, uh, yeah. I know that's good, this could be, but this could be really good. I can't even speak because I'm so excited. This is a bit of an issue though. While your opponent's red key is forged, the red baron gains elusive. But the problem is if your opponent has seen your deck list, which most of the time they have, right? They will never force the red key until it's a third. So that will pretty much never happen this. The only way this is gonna happen is if you play like sealed or, or in some ways that your opponent don't see your your deck list, but yeah, we got in uh, an anomaly. Nice, I like that. <laughs> so cool. So that was Shadows. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, Logos time. And we start off with Vellum, two power reap, archive a card. If you control hide, archive two cards instead. These are fun, Vellum and hide to go together. And destroyed archive hide from your discard pile if you do archive Vellum. <laughs> so, uh, so Vellum and hide go together. So here is hide, uh, it's like, Four power reap, draw a card. If you control vellum, draw two cards instead. So you want to have both of these out at the same time, right? Um, oh yeah, since everybody knows about this red baron, even in seal, people are going to start uh, doing the red key last. So I don't know, is there, do you guys know in the chat, is there a, a blue and a yellow baron? Or is it only the red guy? I don't know. And I think these are sort of also, these anomalies, from what I understand, these are future cards. These are cards coming from a future expansion, sort of. Uh, something like that. Because they have some weird effects. Uh, okay, so hide, yeah. And when it's destroyed, archive vellum from your discard pile, if you do archive hide. So basically, if one of these dies, then nothing happens. But when the other one dies, we get to archive both of them and get them out again, which is nice. Yeah, it's future sets, yeah. Your Google, uh, elusive, play, put a card under him. And then if, when he dies, if it's your turn, play the card. If it's the opponent's turn, or the card. It, it's good. And the wormhole technician again, revealing the top card of your deck. If it's logos, play it. Otherwise, archive it. While wormhole. Oh, maybe these also always come together because he manages the wormhole. So he seems to come after free amber. Play the top card of your deck. And this card is a really cool one. Love it. This new one. Tau Tau Vapors. Play, draw two cards and archive a card. This is so good. I mean, how many action cards? I mean, drawing two cards. That's just awesome. And archiving. So we have a bunch of archiving. Let's hope we get one of those EDs, right? Uh, two of those as well. Wow. Really awesome. Information exchange. Play steal an amber. Oh, this. I don't like this card. Steal an amber. If your opponent stole amber from you on the previous turn, steal two instead. This is in real play. You have to keep track of this then. And well, maybe it's not that hard, but I don't like the complexity in this, but it, yeah, it's a cool effect. Hapsis is nice, five power after an enemy creature is destroyed, fighting Hapsis, ward Hapsis and draw a card. You can draw a card and he basically never dies um, if, you know, he keeps destroying enemies. Igor, love him, two power, look at the top three cards, add one to your hand, discard the others. And daughter is good as well. Uh, we had mother earlier on, now we have daughter. It's weaker though, two power, but it's elusive. And then during your draw card step, refill your hand to one additional card. So it's still good. And two of those. So yeah, that's good. But we didn't get the ED. So these archiving, of course, maybe, uh, you know, not that strong. Uh, but it's always good to archive card. Draw two cards. Archive a card. Yeah, thank you. I would always like to do that. And 
Let's look at the creatures. The Red Baron. How cool is that? I don't know. Do you guys in the chat know how um, how rare these are? Like the percentage? Maybe people don't know that yet because you know it hasn't been enough decks opened to get like a st statistical uh, base. But I am curious uh, how rare they are. It looks like a fast deck. Yeah, it does. Uh, I think this, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff going on in this deck. All those upgrades. So, uh, what's this? 3, 6, 9, 10, 13, 16, 19, 21 creatures again, just like the last deck we opened. Okay, 1 in 300 is... Uh, okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's like, what is that? That's like 0.3% something. Um, the amber is low here though, two, four, five, and yeah, so the like free amber is low in this deck, you could say of course, we have some steel, I love that, Umbra, Yangtze Gang, we have some good like getting more cards into our hand, circling cards, archiving cards, playing cards out of, you know, house, uh, here's archive and drawing cards. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on here. I like card draw. Uh, I like card draw. So yeah, I do like this deck. Uh, it's going to be interesting to try out for sure. And that Red Baron is cool. I do like that. So let's go into the next one. Oh, it's a Maverick. More rare. I have a, I have a few Mavericks uh, actually, but mostly in the first set. Not the first set, the second of course. Um, so anyway. Uh, Thorions, this looks like a fun combo. Thorion, this and Shadow. And what is this? This is like the the third Thorion deck uh, out of five open. So that, that's good. That's good. Let's see if I can open this. Okay, where's the focus? Wow. What just happened to my camera? <laughs> Sorry, just freaked out. Like no focus at all. Maybe because it didn't have anything to focus on, I don't know. So here we have Sack of Coins. Free Amber, play, deal one damage to a creature for each Amber in your pool. That's a good one. Finch Cloak, four power, fight reap. If you have less Amber than your opponent, steal an Amber. Otherwise, each play against an Amber. Oh, so you don't want to fight re well, you get an amber, but your opponent gets an amber as well. That's interesting. Solid chain is cool. Free amber, play your opponent discards a random card from their hand. And then we have the chain gang. They always come together. So chain gang, after you play the subtle chain, you're ready to chain gang. And the action, steal an amber, shuffle the, <laughs> the this card back from your discard pile into your deck. So you can keep doing this sort of, ah, I like that stuff. That's cool. Simon again, skirmish, fighting, putting that enemy creature on top of its owner's deck, like that. Pestering blow, free amber, deal a damage to a creature and enrage it. Mug, free amber, move one amber from a creature to your pool, deal two damage to that creature. That's a good one. Two of those as well. And that one, shuffle the flank creature into its owner's deck. Inky gloom, stopping your opponent from uh, reaping on the next turn. Hugger mugger, three power elusive, capturing one, and stealing one if your opponent has made more keys than you. Hit and run, dealing two damage to a creature, return a friendly creature to your hand, love it. And that was the shadows, a lot of effects. Now we have Saurians with something new here for me. The Compsos Horuspex, four power. Each friendly creature's play effect is, is a play reap effect. Oh, uh, that's a weird card. So. So now with this one out, you can reap with Hugger Mugger and capture one and do the same thing. That is just weird. Um, <laughs> do we have any other play effects? I don't think so. So this this turns play effects into play reap effects. Oh, pretty cool. Six Semper Turosanosaurus. Play, move each amber from the most powerful creature to your pool and destroy that creature. Oh, so if your opponent has the most powerful creature and it has captured and so on, yeah, this is cool. 
Uh, Orator Hisaro, 3 power deploy, ready and exalt each of his neighbors, for the remainder of the turn they belong to House Saurian. So that's cool effect as well, we deploy in the middle, and then you can use his neighbors, but you have to exalt them though. Library of Polisaurios is cool because you can move an amber from a friendly creature to your pool. And this is new for me, free amber, ancient power, play, ward each friendly creature with amber on it. Oh, that's good, since we're probably going to have a bunch of creature with amber on it since we exalt them, so. And here's the one, um, the fire power, one armor with taunt and play ward a friendly, friendly creature. And, you know, if he's out there together with the uh, Haru specs, then he can reap and ward as well. Golden Spiral is cool. Exalt a friendly creature. Ready to use that creature. Yeah, once again, we're going to have so much amber on our creatures, right? Rator Galim. Three power play. Your opponent's keys cost plus three during the next turn. Uh, Reap. You may exalt Rator Galim. If you do, your opponent's keys cost plus three during... Okay. So this is a very, very good way to stop your opponent from forging. But you do have to exalt this guy. But also just playing him. You get that effect without exalting him. So, yeah. Nice, nice. Questor Yarta, 3 power elusive, reap, you may exalt him, if you do you gain an amber. So he's like 2 amber reap, and then, you know, you have to, if you put an amber on him. Odak the Patrician, play, capture an amber. While Odak the Patrician has amber on it, your amber cannot be stolen. This is a cool one. I do like this one. Because he will, you know, you play capture one, so he's going to have amber on him. Ah, oh, I do like this a lot. In theory, at least. Uh, free amber, Imperium. Play, ward two friendly creatures. So, I mean, you can ward him as well to protect him. Nice. And you can put this, this on him as well. Uh, free Amber, this creature gains plus two armor and gains destroyed. Move each Amber on this creature to the common supply. So yeah, we can do some really fun stuff there. And that was uh, Saurians, really cool. And it's really, you know, they are really, they have their own theme. It's all about exalting, capturing, all that stuff. Now we have this, Snag's Mirror, free amber artifact. After a player chooses an active house, their opponent cannot choose the same house as their active house on the next turn. So this is kind of tricky. This card is basically useless if your opponent doesn't have one of the same houses that you have, right? And it goes both ways. It goes, so if your opponent chooses like Saurians, uh, then we can choose Hor Saurians on our next turn. Oh, this, I don't know how good this is. This is really weird. That's a weird effect. Uh, Scallion, 7 power to armor, play, sacrifice a friendly creature. Hysteria is good, return each creature to its owner's hand. Especially good if we have a bunch of play effects. We did have some play effects in here, I think. What is this? E on the fringes, 1 power elusive. During your turn, after you discard a discard from your hand, you may purchase this card from discard pile if you do steal an amber. Okay, I have to read this again. <laughs> if I discard a discard, then I can purchase this card from a discard pile, so it can be from my opponents. And if I do that, I steal an amber. That's that's really good. So I can both purchase an opponent's discard from their discard. This is weird. Uh, and I get to steal. Let's go. Cool. Not finished with you. Free Amber. Shuffle any number of creatures from your discard pile into your deck. I like that. Two of those. Mystery Exploit. Gain one Amber for each damaged enemy creature. I don't know how. If we had like a damage effect for everyone. I don't know. Malison. Five power. Fight. You may move an enemy creature anywhere in its controller's battle line. Then if it is on the flank, it captures one Amber from its own side. So obviously you will move it to the flank. So that, that's a good effect. Lilithal, 5 power, fight, reap, capture 1, and exhume, love it. Free Amber, choose a creature in your discard pile, you may play that creature as if it belonged to the active house that was in your hand. And Dendrix, 5 power, fight, your opponent discards a random card from their hand. And Binding Irons, oh, that's a good one. Play your opponent, gains 3 chains. That's, that's always good. So, wow, okay. That's a bit of a mix here with... Nothing really in this deck that stood out to me. Like, I mean, the Saurians has some really cool stuff. Uh, I did like this one. Your, your, your Amber cannot be stolen when this one is uh, out there and have Amber on it. That is good. And... And that's kind of weird as well. Making all the play effects. Play Reap. 
So yeah, pretty cool. And then in here we had the Hugger Mugger and the Simon, the Chain Gang. Hmm. That's kind of a weird effect as well. I mean, it's the, yeah. So three, six, nine, ten. 12, 40, 15 creatures. 15 creatures is okay, I guess. And then we have some amber pips. Uh, did have a bunch of those, I think. And I guess there's you know, other ways to get amber as well that I might not be... I mean, this is a way to get amber, right? We should count that also, I think. I don't think the enemy, uh, like the creatures, had any... Not often you see that. I miss the time traveler though. But anyway, this will probably get us like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hmm. I think this deck is maybe the one that I'm least excited for in the ones I have opened here. I mean, some of these things here are cool. It feels like it doesn't really have the strong of a theme in between houses. Like the Saurians were really had their theme, right? Together. Like warding each friendly creature with amber on it and then you can exalt and all that. But the other ones felt a little bit more random and I don't know, the combos and all that. So we have one more deck to go tonight in this box. And um, it's, <laughs> it's all empty. Uh, I did open the other six. Uh, off cam, but then I am of course getting more decks uh, up ahead here as well during the week and so on. I'll get more decks and I'll be back with deck reviews and I'll take them one by one. And I love that we end off here with another deck with both the new houses in them, so I love that. So, I mean, four out of the six decks here tonight that we've been looking at had Saurians, and uh, two of them had both the new houses, which is so cool. So, let's have a good, you know. Um, into the stream here with some really cool deck here i hope and we start off with the star alliance psychonic officer lang three power after an enemy creature reaps archive the top card of your deck this is nice as well you know just setting it up and we do have logos so that's you know archiving could be a really really thing here tactical officer moon four power assault two play you may rearrange the creatures in a player's battle line that is kind of cool we can rearrange all of the creatures wow could really mess something up here if they have like a Pampaka Anga. So everyone to the right of that gets plus two power. You just move everything, move stuff around like that. And the stunner upgrade, uh, three amber, this creature gains fight reap. You may stun a creature. Sensor Chief Garcia, three power play fight reap, keys cost plus two uh, during your opponent's next turn. Psy Officer Queen Can, two power elusive. After play chooses an active house, which matches no card in play, steel and amber. I do like that. Let's see if we can get some better focus there. And we have another one of those. Red alert. Uh, board white be sort of. Light of the Archons. Oh, this is cool. An upgrade. Free amber. This creature gains one power and one armor for each upgrade attached to it. So with this one in here, you want to put all the upgrades on one creature, really. And Commander Chan. Four power. Fight reap. Use another friendly creature. I like that. Two of those. Chief Engineer Waltz. Elusive. Two power, play, fight, reap. You may return an upgrade or a robot card from your discard pile to your hand. So that's good to getting those upgrades back. Or a robot. I don't know if we have any robots in here. Um, I don't think so. They're all like human. Or cyborg. And then another one. So yeah, okay, interesting there. And now we go into um, Thorians with this one again. And this is new for me, Paragordian, 6 power, 1 armor, reap, you make salt Paragordian if you do ward each of its neighbors, that's good as well. And this library of Polisaurus again, I do like that. Uh, Exile, still haven't figured out what kind of creature would we want to give to our opponent. But of course we could give a creature to our opponent of a house that our opponent is not ha that doesn't have. So then they're not really going to use it, like if they don't have Star Alliance and we give them one of these... First of all, they don't have any uh, up robots, maybe. So yeah, maybe we want to give them one of these. Um, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. 
And here's the one with 5 power, 1 armor and taunt, and ward a friendly creature. Senator Shrix, 4 power and armor. You may spend amber on Senator Shrix as if it were in your pool. And play Reap, you may exalt him. Oh, that's really good. So you can forge a key with this one. A 7 power creature that eats one every turn. Which one is that? Uh, what's the name of that? I don't remember. Um... Well, yeah, it was the one we had earlier, right? I think. Wasn't that an artifact that killed? I don't know. So, Senator Shrinks seems pretty good because you're gonna keep assaulting, use that amber. Questor Yorta, 3 power elusive. Reap, you may exalt him if you do gain an amber. Perfectus Ludo is nice. 5, five power. Oh, okay, it's not. Yeah, we haven't seen it in the deck. Uh, 5 power. Each other friendly creature gains destroyed. Move each amber on this creature to the common supply. That's good. Phalanx Strike. Free Ember, play, choose a creature, deal one damage to it for each friendly creature. You may exalt the friendly creature to repeat the preceding effect. Oh, that's awesome. So then we can exalt the Senator Shrix because we like having Amber on him because we can use that Amber. <laughs> cool. Legatus Raptor, four power, one armor, a fight. You may exalt Legatus Raptor if you do ready and use another friendly creature. That's good. I like that it's ready and use, not just use. So you can actually like use uh, one of these Saurian guys that you already used. And the Imperium, war two friendly creatures, free amber, like that. Chant of Hubris, free amber, move one amber from a creature to another creature. So you can spread it out. And then we go into Logos with Prospective Grammarbot, three power, taunt, hazardous three. Reap and reach a creature, I haven't seen this before. He's kind of weak, I mean just three power, but and with the taunt, but he has hazardous three at least, and when he reaps and rage a creature, that could be cool. And this is another one I haven't seen, mini group think tank, three power, two armor, play fight reap, deal eight damage to a creature that shares a house with two of its neighbors. Oh, oh wow, so if your opponent has this in their deck, you don't want to put your creatures next to each other of the same house. Because this is this is really tough. You just play it out eight damage. You can kill most things in the game. Wild wormhole. Play top card of your deck. Free amber. Torium plasmate. Free amber. Play move an enemy creature anywhere in its controls battle line. Deal two damage to that creature for each of its neighbors that shares a house with it. Oh. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's a ro. Yeah, yeah. This is a robot, so we can get it back and play it again. Nice, this is also a robot. Oh yeah, so Logos goes well together with with that guy from Star Alliance because ro there's a bunch of robots in Logos. And this is kind of cool because I'm thinking with this one we could move an enemy creature in such a way that it ends up next in, in between two of the same house. First with this, we get an Amber, we deal two damage to that creature. Then we play the tank and now we set it up so that that creature in the middle there Shares a house with two of its neighbors. It takes eight more damage and we, you know, that's ten damage in total. So then we can kill anything. That's really cool. And one of my new favorite cards. Drawing two cards. Archive a card. Sanitation engineer. Four power hazardous one. Reap. Discard a card from your hand. That's good as well. To get, you know, to refill your hand. And here's the weird one. Information exchange. Stealing one. But if your opponent stole amber from you on the previous turn, then you steal two instead. And Igor. Igor is every, in all the decks. I love him. That little guy, two power, look at the top three cards of your deck, add one to your hand and discard the others. I have a AOA deck with four of these in it, it's so much fun. And here's ED. Not sure if we have any, do we have any? Well, we archive a card when we play this, but did we have any other archiving going on here? Uh, there's archiving, of course. So, well, some archiving at least. So this could be good. And Daughter, 2 power elusive, drawing an extra card, love it. And 2 of those, and oh this is bad, it's Cutthroat Research. Free Amber, steal 2 if your opponent has 8 or more, it's so, such a, so rare that you get to pull this off really good. Mostly you just play it for the Amber, it's my, in my experience. So, yeah, I, I think this deck was had some very interesting things here as well. I love this tank, it's a laser beam. Eight damage. That's that's uh, that's not uh, bad at all. And so some pretty nice ones in here as well. Strong creatures, some cool effects, and this one getting the robot back. So on, getting the upgrades back. 
And use another friendly creature, it's good. And tactical officer rearranging the battle line. That, that, that's pretty fun. And that could also set this up. So that you arrange it in such a way that the robot can work on your next turn with logos. So that's cool. 3, 6, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22 creatures. Not bad at all. And kind of low on amber though. Um, we talk amber pips. I don't know if amber pips is such a good way to judge a deck anymore. Because there's so many other things going on, right? So... Four, six, eight, nine amber pips. Yeah, look, look forward to playing a bunch of World's Collide Keyforge up ahead. Uh, that's for sure. And I hope you are as well. I hope you enjoy this. If you want to take a game against me, you know, meet me on uh, the Crucible online. Send me a message. Uh, you can send me a message on Facebook. Facebook.com slash BGWMineramas. And we can set something up. Play some uh, Keyforge against each other. That could be fun online and uh, you know it's really nice because it doesn't matter where in the world you live and all that so that would be fun and thank you so much for watching this live stream it's been uh, over an hour here uh, six decks opened and i do uh, i'm so happy for uh was it four of them yeah four of them had saurians and a bunch of new cards that i hadn't seen before and all that so much fun i love opening these keyforge decks and i'll be back with deck reviews as well when I open them one by one and talk a little bit more about each deck. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for being in the live chat and all that. You know, if you're watching this afterwards, you can, you know, tell me in the comments what do you think about these decks and these cards. And if you have any, you know, if you maybe you see some synergies in there that I didn't see, you know, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, morning, whenever you're watching. Take care. Bye bye.